Hey everyone, this is Ryder from Skip. I hope you're doing well. It's Wednesday, April 14th. Very important video today. There is lots of stuff here. I have heard back from the SBA on a number of important things. In particular, timing of the EIDL loan increase, when you can expect to hear back. Some of you have already gotten emails and I'll tell you what the SBA may be looking for. We have information on what they may be asking for for your EIDL loan increase. Second, the additional $5,000 targeted EIDL advances. We've also heard when you can expect information about that and what you may need to do for that. I'm going to review the latest targeted EIDL approval and denial data so you can see which bucket you're in. And I have more examples of denial reasons. If you've been denied a targeted EIDL grant or if you're still waiting to hear, we have a few more examples that cover basically all of the cases, all of the reasons why you might be denied and I'll talk about some things you may want to consider doing. As always, thank you so much for tuning in and watching till the end of this video. I promise there's so much good stuff in this video. I'll keep it brief. Hit subscribe if you're new to this channel, turn on alerts, and like this video so more people see it. Let me first pull up our poll from a couple days ago, almost four and a half thousand votes. Here is the latest in case you're wondering about targeted EIDL grants. And by the way, tons of great comments yesterday, so thank you for that. And I will answer more of those questions as well, but 15% of you say you've been approved or funded, 9% say you've been denied, 54% say you're still waiting, and 22% say you haven't been invited, okay? That non-invited number was 24% yesterday, so that's going down. It's good to see more people are reporting that they're getting invites, more people are reporting that they're getting approved and or denied. Obviously the denied part is the frustrating thing and there's a couple main examples there. Yesterday I showed an example email like this. Shout out to Eugene for sending this in by the way. But based on what we've seen, this is the most typical one. You are not eligible for a targeted EIDL grant because the IRS has not processed your 2019 federal income tax return. Therefore, when the SBA contacts the IRS based on your authorization, your 4506T, the IRS comes back and says no record found. Okay, and that's the IRS's fault in most cases because the IRS is in a huge backlog. As I went into yesterday, many of you are reporting this. You've been reporting this for weeks. It's incredibly frustrating because there's not much you can do. However, our SBA contact did give some tips there. I'll get to that email in a second. But here is the other main not eligible reason. Shout out to Akila, if I said your name right, for providing this email. The applicant business did not substantiate the required reduction in gross receipts to establish an economic loss greater than 30%. And in fact, many of you sent this example to us. So thank you to all of you for sending this in. But this is related to the other problem. The IRS transcript indicated 0% in gross receipts for 2019. That could because of how you filed in 2019. So both of these are related to the tax returns. And you know, they give an email address here, the target advance at sba.gov. However, they don't say that that is for reconsideration. They just say it's for additional questions. So as of now, there may not be a reconsideration process. I'm gonna read exactly what our SBA contact has said. The other main reason for rejection, again, one out of 10 of you are getting rejected here, unverifiable information. Thank you, Danielle, for sending this in. Here's what it says. During the loan underwriting process, there were one or more items that were reviewed that caused the SBA to question the validity of certain information you submitted as part of your application. That's very vague. If some of you have hunches as to what this may be, feel free to let us know in the comments. And of course, if you find more examples, let us know in the comments too. This is very broad. It could be based on your identity. It could be because you said you had more than one owner, but you only put down your information. Okay, two more examples of rejection letters. This one from Steven, thank you. Here's what the SBA said. We are unable to approve your request for the following reason. We have withdrawn your application from active consideration because the name of the borrower or one of the owners of the borrower has matched against the name of an individual entity on a do not pay database as described below. So if you're not on a do not pay database, they would have flagged you. Would love to hear if you have received this type of email. We're unable to continue the processing of this application until you provide documentation or an explanation to overcome the issue notated below. You have 30 days from the date of this letter to provide information or your application will remain withdrawn. And finally, the last example for today, Jennifer got this, thank you. Withdrawal reasons, the SBA was unable to verify the bank account information that was provided in your application. And as a result, we have withdrawn your application from active consideration, W-51. Not sure what that means, but they canceled it because your bank account information, for whatever reason, was unable to be verified. Okay, let me pull up the email from the SBA, but first, this is up on our blog, Targeted EIDL Grants Sees Increasing Approvals and Rejections. We did a recap yesterday evening. You can find this on the app and the blog right at the top. 
we go over targeted EIDL grant programs. EIDL loan increases, what I'm about to mention, but most of you can expect instructions by the end of next week. The SVO grant program remains closed, so for those of you looking at the Chartered Bending Operators Grant, no action needed yet. We are awaiting SBA guidance. The PPP program is progressing, however, over 80% of the funding has been allocated, so if you're still on the fence thinking about it, now is the time to apply. And 5,000 targeted EIDL grant news is coming next week. This is what I'm going to read to you in a second. And we have lots more additional grants at the state and local levels. If you want to start a free 15-day trial for Skip Plus, the pricing goes up next week. So I'm going to leave a link in the description right at the top. Again, we curate grants throughout the week. We have a dedicated team that looks for grants, different loan opportunities, different other ways of helping your small business. It's completely worth it. Again, price goes up next week. Link right at the top of the description. And so far, people have been raving about it. Thank you so much for all of the great feedback there. We'll continue to work hard to find important information that will help you either save hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of dollars or make thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. So we've got your back. Here's what I've heard back from our SBA contact. She is high up. Regarding the $5,000 supplemental targeted advance, SBA expects to release more details about the $5,000 supplemental targeted advance by the end of next week, so by April 23rd. The only details we can provide at this time is that completing the targeted EIDL advance application will be required in order to determine if a business is also eligible for the $5,000 supplemental targeting advance. So if you're on the fence, if you got the invite and you're not sure if you qualify, well, you got the invite, I've said you should still apply for the targeted EIDL advance because the SBA will make the determination like we see right now, they're gonna review anyway. They're gonna review your location. They're gonna review your tax transcripts. They're gonna review your revenue reduction. So they're reviewing those on their end. If you got the invite, you should apply in good faith that you may meet those requirements. And from what I've heard, if you got that email, that means the SBA thinks you may be eligible. Let me read the second part here. We encourage businesses to check their spam or junk folders to see if they already received the email invite to apply for the targeted EIDL advance. Both the targeted EIDL advance and the 5,000 supplemental targeted EIDL advance will utilize the same application questions to determine eligibility. So when I read that, it makes it seem like you may not have to do anything. They had the one form already you filled out with revenue reduction and in the legislation, there was no requirements for more information. So therefore the SBA should already know who will be eligible for the extra $5,000. Again, we can be critical. Is this really fair? Many of you are getting shut out, getting denied because you're stuck in the red tape. And now there's the potential of people who may not need the money to get that extra $5,000. Again, pros and cons. Obviously it's good if you get the money, but it's bad if you're still waiting. Okay, okay, let me make myself smaller and go on to talk about the EIDL loan increases. Okay, here is the copy in bold. Sorry, we do not have an estimate on the processing time for the EIDL loan increase requests. Most borrowers that requested an EIDL loan increase by email should receive a follow-up contact from SBA by the week of 426. So basically not next week, but the week after with next step instructions. That does not mean the request will be approved by April 26th, just that the next step instructions for the borrower to follow should be sent the week of 426. Now we have heard from some of you that you are starting to get emails about the increases. In fact, here is one example received earlier today that we were made aware of asking for a board resolution agreement and proof of business insurance, basically authorizing you as the recipient to sign for an SBA EIDL loan. So some of you may be getting these emails from case managers. This is a case manager in the Office of Disaster Assistance who want more information. That's a good sign if you get this. That means they are looking at your application, most likely for consideration of the higher EIDL loan amount. I will go into more detail about this tomorrow. Let me finish the instructions here. My second question was about the targeted EIDL grant rejections. Here's the reply. If the SBA's request to the IRS for the 2019 tax transcript information is returned as no record found, we will conduct our own search using alternative methods to validate the applicant is an eligible business entity, okay? So they say they're not just gonna rely on the IRS, they're gonna use alternative methods. I asked for clarification, what are those alternative methods? But have some hope that they may do some digging on their own, such as checking incorporation documents. This could include a search of tax records or other documentation already received by SBA through the EIDL loan review process. Currently, there is no reconsideration or appeal process for the targeted EIDL advance program, but questions about a decline decision 
can be emailed to targetedadvance at sba.gov. That's not helpful if you've already gotten the rejection letter. Again, those letters you've sent in, I'm gonna look into in more detail. I'm gonna have some of the teammates look into this, see what else we can learn. It doesn't look like there's reconsideration at this time. So if that doesn't work out, well, we'd love to help you with other grant opportunities, other funding opportunities. Of course, you can always find these out on Skip. The link is in the description. As always, thanks for sticking around to the end. I know that was a lot of information today. Hit subscribe, share with a friend and like this video. As always, stay healthy, stay well, and I'll see you tomorrow.